Okay, so good evening, everyone. Uh, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Dr. Jibran Ahmed, and you have been watching my series and my lectures. And you all know that why we have gathered around here, and what is the reason that we have gathered around? That we are going to discuss in details about the MD DNB exam approach, MD DNB exam approach for the coming year, two thousand. Twenty-three. Okay, okay. Before we start, I just wanted to confirm: is my voice audible to everyone? Yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. fine. Okay, then uh, kindly mute everyone. Okay, so that uh, if you know if you mute, then everyone can hear better. Okay, so let us start with today's discussion. So first of all. I would just like to tell you one thing that I know that there are many students and all students, you know, they are quite different from each other. So some of you, you must have started reading in the first year. Some of you must have started reading in the second year. Some of you in the third year. Some of you haven't started yet. So there is a mixed bag. Okay. So let me tell you, don't worry at all. Hundred percent, all of you are going to pass in your MD or DNB exam. Okay, no one is not going to fail you unless and until you make some gross blunder. Okay, what is the meaning of a gross blunder? Gross blunder means number one. What is the meaning of gross blunder? Try to understand. Okay, gross blunder means, for example, if you have gone for a, a theory exam, out of ten questions, okay, you have attempted only four questions or five questions. So in that situation, you will not pass. Understand? If, for example, you have entered your viva, okay, and if you have misbehaved with your teachers, if you have misbehaved and argued with your HODs, these are gross blunders, okay. Among the gross blunders comes one very important aspect of a gross blunder that is called as the basics, okay. For example, what do I mean with the by the term basics? For example, if you are if you are not able to For example, if you are not able to answer questions, okay, regarding certain basic topics. For example, if you do not know how to perform a Leishman test, okay, which is a very very basic thing. If you don't answer questions with regard to Leishman test, if you don't answer questions with regards to neoplasia or certain basic defects, or de for example, define cell injury, okay, as basic as this, okay. So, what is cell injury? Define necrosis. Define apoptosis. If you don't answer certain basic questions, okay, like this, okay, then you are bound to fail. So, what is very important that you don't have to try a lot of new things. You have to keep your basics very strong. So, what is very important that for passing your MD exam, what is what is going to help you to pass is to master the basics. You don't have to go for anything new at this point of time. So, right now. It is November, and mostly you people will have your exams in the month of May or June, twenty twenty three. Yes, if I am not mistaken. Yes. So roughly, if we see, all of you are having six months of time. Okay. Now, if you ask me, you don't even require six months for this preparation that I am telling. For this preparation, around three to four months time is more than enough. Okay, for you people to master. Okay, but given that you may have certain commitments or certain other problems, taken into account, I am taking four to five months. Okay, maximum. So first of all, you have to understand. Even if you have not touched your books, this is very much doable, and everyone is going to pass. First, you have to accept in your brain that you can pass. Number one. Number two things for passing. What is required is that you know the basics. Correctly, if you don't know the basics till now, then you are bound to fail. If you don't attend your theory or your practical exam, you are bound to fail. If you don't complete your thesis, you are bound to fail. If you don't, uh, you know, answer simple questions in the exam, you are bound to fail. So, what is very important that we have to approach the basics, okay? And the good thing about basics is that the basics are easy. Always remember, anywhere, even if you see your theory exam, plus if you see your practical exam, always remember in your theory. For example, around seven to eight 
questions okay around 7 to 8 questions total you are having 10 questions in your exam essay type questions 7 to 8 questions will be very basic okay it will be something that is quite usual that will be a repetition and in any exam in any paper two to three questions will be new or it will be new for everyone okay it is always going to be in the same pattern now what i want to tell you about the basics and the commonality is that you have to prepare these 7 to 8 questions that for example if these 7 to 8 questions are coming in the exam then 110% you are going to attempt these questions is this point very clear that 110% you are able to answer each and everything about these in that case if you answer eight questions very nicely and if you just write two to three questions you know in some or the other way you just made up if you just make up still you are going to get you are going to get distinction okay you are going to get distinction if you are going if you are able to do this much so what is in our hand in our hand these seven to eight questions which are repetitive question which are always repeated that will be in our hand and if you study in a right manner the way i am going to tell you today i am going to discuss today you are able to answer eight out of 10 questions and if you answer them properly 100% you are going to get distinction two to three questions will always be new in the exam so remember this point very important now out of these seven to eight questions you will see majority of them are very basic questions you will see that at least five to six questions are such for example they will ask a question regarding diabetes mellitus or for example they ask you question about atherosclerosis or they ask you question for example direct questions on necrosis or apoptosis or they ask you questions directly on the mediators of inflammation these are some very direct and basic questions so you have to master these basics very well this is a very very important so what is very important as of this point of time that you should have a very basic approach you do not have to try anything new similarly in the practical also i am not saying that they are not going to answer you certain recent questions but for example you have got a slide on the lung for example you got a lung slide now for example if you don't know the basics of the classification of the lung tumors they are not going to first ask you what are the recent updates in the fifth edition of the who they, that will never be the first question that will always be the last question so you will be asked about the basic types of lung tumors which is the most common type what are the risk factors what are the etiological factors what is the molecular of this so these are the basic questions that will be asked to you first if you are not able to answer the basic question it is no use to go and to read about the recent advances or the recent questions because questions always start from the basics and at the end it is going to go towards the high so what is the idea over here that for example you have four papers you should know the basics of all the four papers and only after that you should go for the recent stuff always remember any recent advancements any recent advancements if you see that is going to form not more than 10% of all the questions in your theory plus practical okay whereas 90% of the questions will be testing on your basics only so you have to concentrate on your basics and not over here i'm not saying you shouldn't concentrate but it shouldn't be that you are giving 50 to 60% of on your time fearing the recent advanced question or fearing the, all the recent developments that have taken place so if you haven't mastered the basics there is no point reading about the advancements okay this is very much important is this very clear now having said all this stuff let us start today's topic of discussion so the first thing that we are going to see we are going to see the theory then we are going to discuss about the practical and then we are going to discuss about the approach so first thing is the theory then we are going to discuss about the practical aspect and lastly we are going to discuss about the approach okay so this is how we are going to proceed so the first important thing we are going to discuss about the theory now you all have i am sure you all have gone through the national medical council curriculum so we are having very importantly four papers yes or no so i am just going to lay down the basic format of the paper it might change a little bit for you all okay so you just answer me in yes or no okay if if you are all right with the with the you know with the paper division the way i am telling okay so paper 1 is basically 
predominantly based out of general pathology plus some of the systemic pathology questions i will tell you which kind of pathology questions paper 2 mainly they are based out of systemic pathology only systemic pathology paper 3 they are based out of hemat plus cyto and paper number 4 is based out of recent advances now you all tell me whether this is the division you people have most of you do you have this kind of division yes yes sir yes sir yes sir okay yes, so sir. most yes, of sir. you you have this kind of division that is nice to hear but one very paper important paper 3 thing, hemat cyto plus clinical pathology sir yes 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 you are right you are right about that clinical pathology yes someone has rightly pointed out very nice thank you very much for pointing out clinical pathology is also there now in some universities what happens that hemat is included in paper 1 or for example questions from cytology is included in paper 1 okay certain question from even clinical pathology along with that there is something called as tissue processing okay tissue processing questions or questions on the basic stains okay that can be asked any and everywhere now having said that this division that you see this division okay for most part is followed but for example i want to say sometimes questions of paper 2 can come in paper 1 questions of paper 3 can come in paper 1 questions of paper 1 can be asked in paper 3 sometimes this can happen this can occur okay but 95% of the time this doesn't happen but sometimes the overlap can be there okay this is very important now this is the generalized pattern that is there now what is very important i have said this again again each one of you are coming from a different university okay some of you are from a private college that is a deemed college they have their own questions some of you are from a university a state university that is there some of you are from the dnb so they have their own set of papers so what is very important that you have to recognize uh, uh, your own university question papers and i and i'm sure by now most of you must be having and you have gone through the question paper so the last 5 to 7 years question papers okay is a must for you people to have now why the question paper is important can you tell it will give you see i always say to you the question paper is very important because it gives you an idea you know what is to be read and what is it that you have to understand from a topic so it gives you a classical understanding of a particular topic now for example if you have read about one topic now for example the question will be based you know in 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 sense of like you know you have read many things but what are the topics that you are expected to know you know in details that becomes very important that is why you need the question paper so once you are going through the 5 to 7 year question paper then what is going to happen that you will get a basic idea what are the things that i have to read okay i am not saying i am not telling you that you people only have to read these question paper what i am trying to tell you is that what is my requirement is that you have to approach this first because we are not having a lot of time we don't have that much luxury and it is not this 5 to 7 year question paper that is that you have to read there are many other things that you have to read as well okay is this very clear okay so what i am going to tell you i am going to give you a fair bit of an idea right now with regards to i am going to give you a fair bit of an idea with regards to how you are going to approach each and every paper mind it i am talking only about the theory now okay so for the paper number 1 okay that is the general pathology there is no doubt about that at the first 10 chapters chapter number 1 to 10 is very very important okay you directly go in the website you have the videos over there you can download the pdf you can you, you can listen to the lectures and that is going to save you a ton of time i am repeating it is going to save you a ton of time okay but you have to be consistent in your approach okay you have to jot down time for general pathology and not only for general pathology i am going to discuss each and every section and i am going to tell you how to plan out your time 
okay so it is very very important it is very easy 90% 95% questions if you see they are coming from chapter number 1 to 7 okay so 95% questions are coming from here remaining from environment topic there are few questions like diet and cancer there are few questions like uh, you know effects of ionizing radiation these things you have to read from robins directly no notes are required so certain questions you will come across in 5 to 7 years okay that, that that are based for example sudden infant death syndrome okay so these topics you can directly read from robins okay these are very concisely given you don't have to spend a lot of time but you have to go through the first 1 to 10 chapters now what is very important over here in general pathology there is one thing that is nice and there is one thing that is wrong the one nice thing about general pathology is that it is limited okay there is not a lot of things there are few things you have to master that okay and it is something they cannot go out of that they have to give from their own it is limited so you can score a lot of marks over here okay the other important the other bad thing about this is that the general pathology is very volatile so what is to be done the only thing that you can do for this volatility is to carry out repetitive repetitive revisions now for example when you open the the notes okay when you read once you twice you become bored in that situation just listen to the videos you might be doing an exercise you might be doing something else just listen to the exercise you might be going to sleep in that time just listen to the videos each video is around 30 40 minutes so you can watch each of these videos in your own time so is it very clear where the videos are coming into the picture so you have to go through the videos like a bible is it very clear paper 1 doesn't have many right and left okay coming to the approach to the paper number 2 that is the systemic pathology now systemic pathology okay as we have already seen around 80 to 90% of the topics is already present in the website directly go in the website go system wise and go through each and every topic most of the topics have been covered and in the coming one or two months by december end all the topics of systemic pathology will be done okay so you have to go and you have to you know read a lot of topics now the good thing about systemic pathology is that it is quite easy and interesting but the bad thing is the volume it is the volume volume is vast you cannot remember each and everything now i will give you one very important you know uh, one very important tip over here if you go through the last 5 to 7 year question paper in systemic pathology you will see every year two questions are coming based out of the classification or somewhere around either in paper number 4 or in paper because classifications are something that is always getting changed okay and classifications are being asked the latest classification now if you if you ask me personally i can tell you that go and read the who classification i will give you all the classification but personally i will tell you very clearly you are not going to remember the who classification even if you know which classification is going to come in the exam mark my word you will never be able to You, you know you know you will never be able to memorize the who classification you take it from me. okay this is the fact so in that situation what you have to do you see the robins at least whatever classification is there in robins you see now always remember in any type of tumor in the end if you see there will be one section on mesenchymal tumor hematolymphoid tumor okay these sections will remain common across all the tumors so you can add them but what is very important that robins will tell you what are the important entities that you have to write in the classification also one very important thing is that i have also discussed certain important who updates have come as i told you new updates for example renal cell carcinoma classification has changed if you have seen the latest cns classification now that is a very new question the cns classification can come as a long answer this time but again if you look at for example what i am trying to say you if you look at the cns classification it is huge but if you see there are certain entities for example the first entity is your gliomas along with glioneuronal tumors along with the neural tumors okay after uh, inside of that you are having diffuse glioma which can be adult and pediatric then you have circumscribed glioma then you are having your glioneuronal tumor then you have ependymoma after that you have embryonal tumors then you have meningioma so there are different headings and under each heading you don't have to remember each and everything but at least some important entities you should remember okay this is very important that 
right now for example the 2021 uh, cns classification has completely been changed so that can come as a recent advanced question so those things you have to remember but for example if you see the skin classification it is huge it is going for two pages three pages so you cannot remember each and everything so it is better that you just see the important terms you cannot remember each and everything so refer to robbins for classification so is this point very clear okay okay now you are not required to by heart the classification but you should be able to grossly define give a fair bit of division a fair bit of entities you should write that much even the the teachers they cannot remember okay so take it from me so don't waste a lot of time uh, you know after the who classification okay okay now coming to your third paper that is a hematology cytology clinical pathology tissue processing and everything now i will tell you this clinical pathology tissue processing okay all these stuff it is not confined to paper number 3 rather this can be asked across all the sections and actually these are actually important uh, topics for practical okay so i will discuss in details about them during the practical so right now in the paper number 3 okay in the paper number 3 you have no again just like the paper number 1 just like the paper number 1 if you see the paper number 3 is also limited there are not many things that you have to read from okay so for example there are certain topics from cytology that you should know in details whatever topics have been covered in cytology in the website you should cover that and there are little bit more entities for example liquid based cytology is there or for example quality control qc is there biomedical waste management is there so you will find a lot of these simple questions which you will find in pranab de book pranab de cytology book if you see uh, that has been uploaded in the telegram channel and many such questions based out of cytology you will find over there okay so don't worry on that aspect those will be covered as well by december okay so cytology again is limited you don't require a lot of time for cytology mainly from cytology all the different types of classifications uh, with regards to the bethesda system of reporting for cervix bethesda system of reporting for thyroid paris system of reporting for urine cytology milan system is there so uh, the yokohama system for breast uh, you know uh, for grading of breast uh, breast uh, tumor so all these different you know nomenclature systems are there and this is basically asked over there liquid based preparation then uh, your you know uh, pap smear can be asked mgg smearing can be asked so these basic things cell block can be asked from there these are the basic important things that can be asked and i will give you a list of questions that can be asked from cytology what i want to tell you cytology is very very simple you have to see all the system wise videos from the website itself because that is going to explain you in details what are the practical aspects of your cytology you will not find those in the books and from there if you understand that then only you will be able to answer your viva questions in the exam or whatever practical slides have been given so it is utmost importance that first you cover all the cytology uh, uh, videos that is given in the website after that you can go go for certain other cytology videos coming to hematology we have already discussed in details now i am telling you for 2023 everyone listen to me carefully there has been an increased number of changes in the myeloproliferative neoplasms and that will be a recent advanced question i am telling you from now it has been uploaded okay very very important very very important long answer question in the exam that will come from myelodysplastic syndrome mds is a sure shot question for your exam this year okay so for hematology most of the things have remained same but there has been a major change in the myeloproliferative neoplasm similarly cmml can be asked okay jmml can be asked also this year for your exam rest most of the things are the same but these few things which have come this year 2022 hematolymphoid neoplasm okay the classification of renal cell neoplasm that has also changed that i will be updating in the group okay these will become important thing but first very importantly whatever rbc disorders whatever uh, uh, wbc disorders and platelet disorders that have been, has been uploaded in the group you should know those basics by heart many things will be added also in the group there is a lot of time right now okay so what i want to tell you that again paper number 3 gives you that scoring chance you cannot uh, you know miss on paper 3 paper 3 also has blood bank 
Okay, so paper three again is very easy. Cytology and hematology you can ace that very easy. So paper one and two are very 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 easy. Paper two is very very vast. So the chances of you not remembering an a question is very high in paper number two. And also there will be a vast majority of questions. See all these are of same marks. This will be hundred marks. This will be hundred marks. This will be hundred. And this recent advance will be hundred. Then why you want to waste that much amount of time and energy over here? You shouldn't waste that much time and energy for paper number two. You should equally divide your time, and you have to work very smartly in this manner. So think in that way. Okay. Another very important thing I want to tell you before I go to the paper number four with the theory, I want to tell you one very important aspect. There are certain basic systemic questions. For example, I tell you diabetes mellitus, atherosclerosis, myocardial infarction. Okay. Uh, similarly, etc. Like hypertension. Okay, these are certain like obesity. Okay, for example, Alzheimer's disease. For example, Prion's disease. There, there are certain systemic disorders that are quite generalized in nature. Now, these questions, even I can add cystic fibrosis. Okay, now these questions, if you see these questions, these are very basic, and these questions can be asked. Either in your uh, paper one or they can be asked in paper number. Two. So these generalized questions, even I can include over here alcoholic liver disease. Okay, this is I can also also add. Okay, or effects of alcohol metabolism. Okay, so these are quite generalized. Even for example, metabolic liver disease. Okay, so these are quite generalized topic and these are very high, you know, very hot topics. You will get at least two questions can come from here. In my exam, when I was giving diabetes mellitus, they came in paper number two. It came in paper number four. Part of the question also came in paper number one. So these are very very high yield topics. Okay, these are quite high yield topics that always you know it is repetitively asked. Even one more question, for example, in the paper number two, that is in the systemic pathology questions like. Neuroendocrine carcinoma of the lung is a very favorite question of examiner. So there are certain you know repeaters in the exam, and there are certain generalized questions this is asked. So you should be thorough with them. You shouldn't leave any of this because this will be asked hundred percent. If you see go through the pattern, these questions are asked. Some generalized questions like diabetes, atherosclerosis, MI, and you will see these questions will also be asked in details in your uh, you know in in your practical exams. Okay, so these questions you don't have to miss. These are certain generalized questions. You have to read about them in details. Okay, okay. Now coming to the paper number four, that is the recent advance. Now you people correct me if I am wrong. I will tell you the story about recent advances. Paper number four. Now this paper number four is very funny. Why I say it is funny? You cannot do a lot of things about it because. the possibilities of questions over here is there are more than 1000 topics from where the questions can come okay i am very frank with you so it is no point that you you know you are going towards all the journals all the you know re recent articles everything going over there has no use you will see at the in the end something else came and you could, could and you couldn't answer the question so usually let me tell you what you should do to approach paper number 4 so first of all you should read the recent advances okay that is the 23 24 some of you also have 22 you can read that but mainly 23 24 this recent advance you should read i don't know if any latest recent advance edition has come recent 25 has come or no i don't think it has come but 23 24 you should read okay then after that what you have to go there is a hematology recent advance also but there are three volumes 1 2 3 now you cannot go and read all the topics from hematology recent advance 1 2 3 but you should read those hematology recent advance that those questions which have already appeared in the last 5 to 7 years for example minimal residual mrd and hematology advance recent advance question can also be asked in your paper number 3 for example one question called as blood substitutes it comes for example one question like apla syndrome okay it also comes now apla syndrome i have already covered in general pathology in detail and all the recent advances has also been included over there so you can go about that over there i'm just giving you a fair bit of an idea apart from that this 
they can ask you question from 1 2 3 paper 1 to 3 can be asked in paper number 4 also and vice versa anywhere it can be asked again there are very important things see in my college they never used to have journal club topics i used to read different kinds of articles and journal out of my own interest but over but in my college they did not have usually what they do okay you will see that you have certain seminars or journal clubs are there okay so in the last one year whatever journal clubs topic that your senior has uh, that your junior has presented or you have presented okay at least go through those topics and because uh, you already have prepared a seminar on that so that will be easily available from each one of you from each and every one of you. so you can and this is you know quite specific for individual college because they tend to you know give questions from these general club topics that you have prepared or your counterparts have prepared so those 10 15 topics you take into account now when you have to prepare for you know from the articles and the general clubs you don't have the that particular time and luxury uh, you know to go and read each and every article each article you should not give more than 15 minutes and you should just make 10 points out of each article and you should just write down those 10 points and that 10 points only you should bear in your mind for your exams okay apart from that anywhere out of all the papers they can ask you ihc markers commonly ki 67 okay they can ask you these common or cytokeratins these can be asked as exam questions so commonly they can ask you mmps matrix metalloproteases and all these things. now because i am from west bengal and i have access to all the question papers from west bengal so what i will do that i am going to post those questions in the group as well right after this session i'm going to post that in the in that particular exam going 2023 batch group i am going to post along with that one good thing is that that out of this 23 24 recent advance i have majority majority of the pdfs have been prepared by me in a period of next 3 to 4 days i'm going to you know i'm going to uh, post many different kinds of exam related pdfs that you might not have for example cell block matrix metalloproteases heat shock proteins okay so uh, these are very very important topics that is that you are not going to find anywhere i have already made a note out of it so that will be posted in the group you can just print out them and you can start to read okay that is going to save you a lot of time and energy okay is this clear so the first half not the first half the first one third we have already discussed now you people tell me do you have any doubts with regarding uh, with regards to how you should approach for the theory papers yes everyone yes no sir okay so is it very clear to everyone okay so now we are going to now this you might have some idea about this now the second part that is the practical it is very very important and most of you if you see you will not have the idea regarding the practical and you must be fearful of the practical but if you ask me practical is the one which is easiest part if it is done right the way that i am telling you practical is the easiest part if the way i am telling you you do one very important thing is before i come over here in the last 7 to 8 years okay i have taken this data in the last 7 to 8 years the students that have failed in their in their exam wasn't because of the practicals it was because they had failed in the theory okay i am repeating again people who have failed their md exam they have not failed in the practicals majority of them they have failed in the theory okay so so before i go to the practical i will just tell you few important things in the theory i know most of you know this there are these are very practical point that you have to keep in your mind number 1 that you should attempt all the questions attempt all questions okay now remember the examiner whoever is checking your paper 95% of the times they don't have the time and energy to read each and every point number 1 number 2 when they have to check so many papers they do not have you know that much liberty to check each and everything in detail now for example if you don't know a particular question but even if you have written half page one page two page at least out of 10 they will give you three or four marks at least that much marks will be given to you 
okay so that and the examiner for example sometimes when the examiner is uh, you know uh, the, the examiner is actually uh, giving you the final marks and he is seeing that out of 100 maybe you are getting 46 then somewhere around the if you have attempted more questions he can add 1 1 1 you know in each uh, you know he, he can add plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 and you know he can make it around 50 out of 100 you understanding my point so always attempt all the question why am i tell, telling you this is out of my personal experience when i was an examiner okay this is out of my personal experience yes uh, i will come to that that will be the third session third part of our topic that we will come to that in the last first we have to understand that what is it that that we are you know up against what is it that we have to focus on so right now you people have the idea there are four theory papers what where how how to read okay you have to take the last 5 to 7 years question paper and start solving that should be the first line of action okay okay i will come to most now very important thing is another very important thing is time management you are having a 3 hour paper and you just have 15 minutes to write one essay type question now for example you have to keep that in mind because if you don't i have seen brilliant students okay out of 10 question they knew all the 10 questions but they could only write 6 or 7 they couldn't do well because of that really i am not kidding about that so for example the meaning is the time management is very important now for example i will tell you how wh what is the meaning of this you have got one question on diabetes full diabetes full they have asked you everything okay and you have got for example another question is there for example you have got vasico bullus lesion of skin now if you if you have to write diabetes mellitus okay it, nicely it will easily take around 30 minutes time and if you have to write vasico bullus lesion in your exam hardly it will take you 8 to 10 minutes time even less than that may, maybe 6 minutes okay so what is very important suppose if you have spent that much time over here and you don't have time even to attempt this question then do you know what you are having both of them are carrying the same marks so you have to organize your answers in a way that you can complete each answer in 15 minutes only now for example this can be done that for this you spare 20 minutes and for this you spare 10 minutes but that has to be done at the exam table so you should keep that thing in your mind you know that's very 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 important okay this is very very important that you should understand now coming to the next section that is a pra practical and to be very very honest this is the part i think most of you fear and i will tell you this is to be feared because if you don't do it right then you can make a lot of blunders over here and, and it is very shocking that that i have seen many students who don't know anything in the practical even certain easy things they don't know it is not their fault the thing is that they have not been properly oriented about the practicals because to be very frank let us be very frank with each other especially in the government hospitals no one doesn't have the time and energy to explain okay each and everything so i will tell you i might differ in my approach uh you know some of you might have a different kind of practical but majority of the things will be same so first of all if you see the practicals are usually carried over a period of 2 days it is not usual this is the law this is by law by the national medical council has given it as a law to carry the practical pathology practical over 2 day period number 1 number so they can divide each and everything in practical in multiple ways so let me just show you okay let me just start dividing the practicals for you okay this is the first division this is the one day division okay let me just show you what all things are there for example the first important part over here in the practical if i mark is your clinical pathology okay clinical pathology now whatever books you have reading or you're not reading i'm not going to say that from where you should read what you should read whatever book you are reading you read from there personally i have read from kothalkar clinical pathology because it was a very simple book if you can read desi lewis that is also better that is also fine with me i have no problem if you are reading any other book that is fine by me too has no problem whatever suits you but very important one section is there on the clinical pathology part jiske andar mein you are number one you are getting the urine sample in the urine you have to perform the test for sugar protein and ketone body the same test that you have done for the mbbs okay or for example you must be participating in the mbbs examinations so over there as an invigilator you must be watching whatever things they are doing yes yes or no so this is very very important so you should 
understand you should know each and everything about the urine how to examine the urine the gross features the microbiological examination chemical examination physical examination microscopic examination of urine has to be dealt in details okay this is very very important number 1 number 2 you will be asked to perform a peripheral blood smear you should know how to do a leishman stain i am telling you right now if you are there go to your central lab if you have not done a leishman stain if you have not prepared a slide with your own hand start preparing it will not take a much it will not it is not going to take much time everyone should know how to prepare a basic peripheral blood smear using the romanovsky leishman stain and each and everything with regard to the romanovsky stains and the staining method and the pbs peripheral blood smear everything should be known these are the basics because when you are going out to practice this is forming the bread and butter and you have to be competent over here you are no more an mbbs they are going to try to see what you don't know and this is a very simple topic to master okay again okay. after that comes very important problem cards okay you will be given problem cards now for example in the problem card i will give you certain samples from my university west bengal university of health science i will give you you can get a fair bit of an idea now what is happening in, in problem card for example okay you will be a clinical case beginner or a scenario for example nephrotic syndrome has been given signs symptoms of nephritic syndrome has been given or signs symptoms of jaundice now jaundice if you see if you look at the lfts if you read over there there are different kinds of jaundice so according to the situation you have to understand which kind of jaundice they are speaking about okay then for example they can give you a case of a meningitis okay they can give you that or for example they can give you a case of a uti or they can be multiple clinical scenario or for example a case of hemolytic anemia they can be multiple problem cards with multiple now for the problem cards it is important every university have their own set of problem cards so at the time of practical you will be shown which problem cards will be kept and you should read about that in details okay for your problem card now what is very important that this problem cards are usually based out of the renal function test kidney function test or cardiac function test or liver function test or thyroid function test okay or for example even the semen analysis that is there okay so you have to read these topics in details on the basis of your problem cards okay all these function tests should be read in details for this clinical pathology part okay then again over here in this part very commonly a mp slide or a malaria slide can be there you might be asked to perform how to make a thick smear thin smear now the best way to learn is from the person that is there the medical laboratory technologist that is already working over there you that is the best person to learn how to perform a mp uh, mp slide and you should be well aware how to interpret that already the discussion has been done inside of group for the mp slide how to identify each one of them and all the related questions should be answered what is you know malarial parasite index okay all these different different question what are the different ways what are the newer methods what are the one which is followed in your lab what is the principle of that so all these things you should know lastly very importantly they can keep blood group also okay they can group blood group also and a separate section on the blood grouping has been kept for you people there is a separate section of blood grouping in the hematology section that i have already kept so blood grouping is very commonly asked in the exam so is this very clear okay one side you are getting this clinical pathology part okay this is one section of your practical exam another section section number b comes your gross plus autopsy plus a specimen in that table there will be one table or maybe in the grossing room okay where you are doing your routine grossing okay so i hope right now i will i will i'm just going to tell tell you each and everything right now so for the grossing aspect whatever you have done the basic grossing you should know the grossing of the uterus grossing of the breast grossing of the colon okay or for example any mass that is given to you then what are the steps of grossing you might also have to perform a section over there and you have to show to the examiner okay so whatever specimens are kept you will already be told about that that that, that is nothing to become worried if you have done the practicals nicely in the 3 years then you know what you know gross specimens that will and they will ask you mainly in the gross what do they ask you they will ask you 
that how you can make a differential diagnosis okay looking at a tumor now for example if an ovarian mass is kept and that ovarian mass for example is mucinous then it is giving us a hint that it is a mucinous ovarian carcinoma so there are many such specimens that is kept in the exam from which you have to take an idea so for the gross i have already uploaded the main book that is the tata manual of grossing the pdf has been uploaded inside of the telegram channel group you have to read that book like a bible I, and i know that 100% of you have read that book already for the grossing okay then for example for the autopsy now autopsy is not something that is very it is done you are receiving the specimen especially in the government colleges but we have we don't have to perform autopsy but if you go uh, to england if you go to other countries pathologists they have to perform autopsies as well means you have to autopsy not as in the grossing that means you have to open the body and you have to carry out the pathological autopsy now for the autopsy i have uploaded multiple books in the telegram you can go via each one of them else there is a very short method that i follow personally see in the autopsy there is one practical book called as pk chakraborty okay i have already uploaded that pdf and i will also upload each and everything again in the exam going group don't worry on that aspect so over there they have given a basic autopsy there are just three pages wherein they have discussed what type of incision you should take and how you should approach for autopsy of uh, for various organ i will share a youtube video wherein they have shown very clearly how you should carry or how you should retrieve the brain okay then the cardiac autopsy or the cvs autopsy has to be read from washington's manual they have given very nicely the four methods of dissection of the cardiovascular and rest of the system you can see directly from here there are multiple books but i will not tell you that you should spend a lot of time in autopsy because many a times they don't have separate time to you know to, to give on the autopsy part okay and they can ask you many other questions from autopsy but the marks are limited over here so you don't worry on that aspect the third very important thing that is there in that table is the specimens that the same specimens that you are keeping for your mbbs exams for example a specimen of colorectal carcinoma breast carcinoma specimen or for example melanoma specimen or inter so these are the different uh, specimens that will be there because over there they are going to judge your ability to identify okay for example infective endocarditis of the heart so there are certain conditions of the heart that 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 you know you should know endocarditis and the different different specimens that were kept in your mbbs exam i will give the list of all these specimens and i will tell you also how and where to read don't worry on that aspect but you should know that these things are there specimens will be there autopsy will be there grossing will be there okay these things will be there coming to the third aspect very important is the slides something that you fear okay so there are your hemat slides along with that you will have the cyto slides along with that you have the histopathology slides okay in total in total if you see the range of slides is approximately 24 to 28 slides are there and each slide if you see they are carrying approximately 5 marks in some colleges and some colleges they carry 10 marks so in majority of the ways 70% mask is for your description around 30% mask is kept for your impression just remember even if you get your impression right but if your description is wrong the examiner is not going to give you marks and it is more important to be honest in your exam whatever your findings you are getting you write that even if your impressions are wrong if you justify your answer in that case you will get full marks okay always remember honesty is the best policy in your practical exam if the examiner knows that you are honest and your basic approach is correct okay he will pass you and he will give you good marks as compared to any other person that has copied from someone else or has given a right answer but cannot describe the slide cannot say anything or cannot answer any following questions in that situation uh, you know he is going to fail even if you have a correct impression so always remember this thing. now how do you prepare for this now as you are reading in the theory you are coming across so many images you have also gone through so many images in your, you know so so many slides in in the past 3 years okay apart from that i will post a list of exam slide list of exam slides will be posted in the group 
that much that is possible i am going to share the, you know inside of group and we will have slight discussions that much is possible in the next 6 months i am going to do that but along with that once you have the list even if you see that that you know uh, that sir is not getting the time or that much is discussion is not there you go through the books and you read all the important points with regards to that okay so the list of all the exam all the important exam slides will be shared with you in the group is this point very clear and be sure 90 to 95% of the questions or the slides will come from there they are not going to give you very difficult slides out of 28 slides maybe 4 5 slides are difficult but majority of the slides will be easy and you are not going to believe i had diagnosed there were approximately 10 slides that i did not see in my life but i had the impression from the books that i read or from the diagram that i have seen so it is very much important that you have the visual impression because if you don't have a visual impression of a particular diagnosis in that case you will not be able to make a diagnosis always remember this history of the patient is very important while you are answering a question very very important for example if you are getting a tumor in the bone and if the age is 15 16 years it is pointing towards osteosarcoma if the age is 40 years then it is pointing towards chondrosarcoma so you can get a hint from looking at the history of the patient okay so this is how we are going to approach for the hp slides hemat and cytology slides okay now for this already in the group i am going to start giving more slides okay so slide discussions will be there now you don't have to think that sir we are not having that much discussion this or that don't think you just participate you participate and you keep on you will make mistakes it's not an issue be honest start to participate in the group discussions you will see in the next 2 3 months you will have a lot of improvement the way you are right and this is also going to prepare you for your time management now remember in the exam they have a particular timer okay after for example they have given you 5 minutes or 10 minutes for a particular slide they will not give you half an hour for a slide in that time you have to see you have to write you have to write the impression so that practice is going to happen in the slide discussion group and that is how you have to take advantage of that group is this very clear so we will have the slide discussion approximately i will give you list of 100 slide that is more than enough okay that is more than enough to know okay okay apart from this also remember in either of them over here in clinical i forgot one thing fluid sample can be given to you even the csf sample can be given to you a new bar chamber will be provided to you for example they can give you distilled water and they will tell you this is a csf sample and they will tell you to Uh, you know um, do the counting and everything they will ask you all the procedure and they will ask you and everything over there understand what i am trying to say so these are very important you might be provided with the new bars chamber and everything in your exam okay so this is uh, your three important aspects of your practical this is a b c now we are going to now we are, okay there is a question from someone no 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 please please you don't have to become scared you have to become oriented okay this is the practical approach that you have to develop okay if you don't know then you will not act okay only by knowing you will act so please listen very carefully what i am trying to say because no one is going to tell you these things and the first time that you are going to come across these things is in your exam so no one was there to tell me i am telling you right now so that you can act okay you have to be confident for your exams okay now section number d for the practical that is there there is a element of micro teaching okay now this micro teaching you will be given for example one day before you know you will be given certain topics so in our case 10 topics were given and we were around nine uh, we were around eight or nine residents were there and 10 topics was given and actually it is kept in a particular bowl okay all the topics are kept in a bowl you have to take the chit and whatever is your topic you have to go and perform that particular topic in your exam so on the day one only okay you will be told what is your topic and next day you have to prepare that topic you will be given approximately 10 to 15 minutes of time and you should teach that in front of the teachers okay it carries a good amount of marks micro teaching carries a lot of marks so again a very scoring section you have to teach also in the exam then again one section can be kept for instruments okay in your exam you can have instruments like for example bm and needle bone marrow bm bx needle can be there okay a lumbar puncture lp needle can be kept okay fnsc gun can be kept okay esr tubes can be kept in the exam 
they can just keep the blood group bottles and they can go on your viva with the blood group bottles and what is the universal coding and they can go on with the blood grouping and blood banking and everything okay f tissue processing now you all know in your uh, you know all of you are having histopathology in your college so there is a tissue processing room wherein someone is you know you have containers where they are transferring all the different kinds of tissues from one container to another some of them are having automatic uh, containers then this is the tissue processing part so tissue processing right from the fixation part okay till they are forming the blocks okay you have to know each and everything in and out okay along with that all the different types of staining techniques that is there at least you should know how you can perform hne along with that one special stain mostly they ask you to perform pas staining so go in the tissue processing room and see what is happening okay you will not take a lot of time and only one book that i have already given in your uh, uh, in your uh, telegram channel that is the pranab day the pranab day book for lab techniques okay it is the simplest book that you can have you have to start reading this book now why you have to start reading this pranab day book because this tissue processing techniques they are also asked in your theory exam okay these will be asked whatever i am telling you in your practical these can be asked in your theory exam for example they can ask you about romanovsky staining in your exam for example they can ask you how you you know they can ask you about the lab diagnosis of malaria in the exam understand what i am trying to tell you so whatever things you have to read for your practicals some questions from there can come in your exams as well in the theory exams as well so tissue processing there is a book pranab day it is such an easy book if you start reading today in 2 to 3 days you can complete that book it is a very very simple book i am going to advise you that you take the print out of selected chapters from the book they have given all the staining all the tissue processing techniques has been given very nicely and in a very easily comprehensible manner that you can understand okay so tissue processing is a very important part of your practical after that after that comes the main thing acha acha one more thing one more thing yes h and e staining that you have to do along with that there is a room where you where they are cutting the sections okay you can be asked to sit and take the block and you have to take the sections and then you have to take the, the that particular section that you have cut and you have to take that in a slide and then you have to you know uh, uh, keep it in the fridge and then you might have to you know make you know do the section cutting so section cutting you have to learn it is not a very difficult thing two to three times if you try two to three days you are going to learn how to take a section so section cutting again becomes very important uh, uh, thing over here along with that if you have any electron microscope present in your institute or if you have any frozen section uh, you know that that is going on in your in your institute then the examiner is bound to ask question again these topics are given again in this pranab day book it's a very very simple book pranab day and very you know a lot of answers can be found in this book so this is a must book ha uh, to have for tissue processing okay along with that you should be thorough with pap staining and mgg some usual staining that is being done for fnacs for slide making in the central lab or for histopathology you should know okay is it very clear now after this okay number g around 200 marks is allotted for a very important aspect that is your grand viva you know what is a grand viva yes anyone can tell me what is a grand viva now you are in third year you must be knowing yes what is grand viva bolo anyone okay yes any, any anyone bolo what is grand viva see in the grand viva what is going to happen there are two internal and there are two external examiner okay now after, at the end okay when you have performed all the tests in the two day process now everyone knows who is what because they will get a fair bit of an idea now they are going to bombard questions on you that you are sitting in this grand viva okay you are sitting here and over here they are going to bombard you with thousands of questions now over here they can ask you different types of question for example they can keep hplc charts over here 
they can keep the qc control charts okay for example the lj chart that is there okay they can keep the lj chart they can keep the platelet function test hplc has already been discussed pfts has been discussed these charts will be discussed by me it's not very difficult a by month of january i am going to discuss these charts as well for the exams especially for you people electrophoresis charts has already been discussed in the section in my website okay all the di the different screening test for example the hams test or for example nestroff test that is there okay this can be asked you can be given a curve for example osmotic osmotic fragility test that particular chart is there that can be given to you as well okay now this is the end and this is these are the different kinds of things that you have to prepare now at this point of time i know that your heart rate have increased you haven't heard about half of these things in your life and right now your heart is pumping very hard and you don't know what to do i know but do not worry everything is doable and it is very very easy it is not that much difficult okay i will guide you through this entire process so now my basic job over here is was to orient you that what is going to happen with you after 6 months okay and this is something which is not that much difficult it is doable if you use the right approach coming to the approach that is the third section of today's topic let me go to the approach till here anyone is having any kind of doubt if you are having any ounce of doubt regarding anything now is the time to ask else i am going to go how to approach all these stuff yes anyone is having any kind of doubt till here yes no doubts okay so we are going to go to the approach now first thing that i am going to tell you my first line over here towards the approach is that that every one of you will pass every one of you will pass unless and until if you go against the rule of basics that i have already explained now the first important thing that is very important in your approach is organization what do you mean by organization organization means are you well prepared to approach your theory are you well prepared to approach your practical are you well approached do you have access to the 5 to 7 years question papers that you are going to use do you have the list of problem cards that is there in your exams that is routinely kept in your exams every year do you know the list of practicals that they are keeping for your exam because they don't change usually they don't change so are you aware of these things that is organization organization is what do you know that if i am reading this question where is the answer to that question do you know that so that is organization and believe me there are so many different different things that if you are not organized then you are never going to remember things one day before the exam so you have to be organized you should know from where which what question because see there are so many questions one day before the exam if you have to revise 100 or 120 question then you should be clear where what answers are if this is the question answer to this is in this book here is there or is in this note so you should be ready you cannot waste time searching the answers one day before the exam this is a very practical thing no one is going to tell you so organization is very very important now regarding the approach someone was asking me how do i how do i break down my time now i am not i am not uh, taking into account that you are getting a leave i am taking the worst case scenario that you have to attend your college from 9 to 5 okay till at least one month before your exam you have to do this i am taking the worst scenario into consideration now okay, okay. having taken that into consideration 2.5 hours before 9 o'clock and 2.5 hours after 5 o'clock is the time that you should allot i am repeating 2.5 hours in the morning and 2.5 hours in the evening you have to allot for your exam i am not saying something that is the best worst something no i am telling you something which is very practical in the morning hours you have to concentrate mainly on the theory aspect for example general pathology theory especially general pathology in the morning you should read general pathology in the morning mostly all the theoretical aspects boring aspects stupid aspect you should learn in the morning okay 
in the evening you should read certain easy topics you should concentrate on your practicals in the evening okay you should concentrate on your practicals in the evening and in between from morning 9 to 5 o'clock you have to take out 1.5 hours for yourself in this time you have to promise yourself that you will read recent advanced topic now i will tell you i had completed all the recent advanced more than 200 questions i had completed in 2 to 2 and a half months of time utilizing one hour i used to run away to the library and i used to sit over there making you know notes of my you know different uh, uh, i used to make notes from the different recent advance the notes that i am going to post inside the group it has not been prepared after my md it has been prepared during my md during the last 2 to 2 and a half months so i am not sharing you anything you know that is out of the blue or something you should be lucky enough that you are having this much exposure at this point of time okay so is this very difficult 2.5 hours before morning in the morning hour 2.5 hour in the evening 1.5 hour in between okay this is taking into consideration the worst aspect when you are not having this now very important thing that i will tell you right now under the organization that you should schedule your day you should schedule your day the night before what is the meaning of that for example for example i will tell you tomorrow you are you want to read you want to plan out your day tomorrow so the planning of tomorrow should be done one day before not as in you know you have to write down everything no just a basic planning in your head for example for example i will tell you one thing. for example tomorrow's topic of discussion is uh, tomorrow's topic of for example discussion in the morning i will read general pathology for example i will read chapter number 2 okay half of chapter number 2 i am going to complete in the morning in one one and a half hour i will give to that along with that i will read a systemic pathology topic for example i will read atherosclerosis an easy topic i am going to read sir has already given the notes for that i will go through the notes directly you read this in the morning then you go for example to your work now you are third years i hope that the second and first years have taken the burden of work and you have a lot of time okay so once you go to the college at least find some amount of time okay to read your recent advanced topic for example one of the recent advanced topic is your molecular uh, you know genetics molecular genetics of osteoarticular tumors or bone tumors molecular of bone that is a very easy topic you will not even take half an hour to read that now in that situation if you will take half an hour only then you add one more topic for example i will add blood substitutes also i can do half of blood substitutes tomorrow okay when you come back then i will do i, I will read uh, for my practical i will start reading my clinical pathology something for my clinical pathology then i will read tissue processing then i will read my grossing or autopsy part okay so i will give approximately 45 minutes to each now for example if you have this much now how much time did i take to make this how much time maximum 15 minutes you can do this calculation in your brain so if one day before if you have this calculation then the next day in the morning you will not waste your time in deciding what i should read what i shouldn't read your mind has to be decided one day before what you want to do it is not something that you should just write down each and every understand yes which part you didn't understand i am just saying that you should plan a day in advance about the different topics that you have to do i have just given you an example over here of how to plan your day as i am telling you in the morning one session should be there one session throughout the day while you are in college and one session you have to do when you come back home and this is the timeline that i have given you in the morning hours you should go for the theory part or certain non interesting part certain difficult portions that that, that you know takes a lot of energy from you because in morning hours you know your mind is quite fresh for doing that and also revision should be kept in the morning hours recent advances you should read in those time when you are at place of your work when you have some spare time in that time you should read and in the evening hours you should concentrate mainly on your practical aspects is this point very clear to everyone see uh, dr nilisha yes, are you a third year or are you second year
sir i am third year student okay so you are a you are a you are a you are a third year student and yet you have yes, to sir. present that till which time do you have to present sir till december we have scheduled up and they are not okay. leaving us also from night duties and so topics are not able to divide it properly okay Who okay okay i will i will tell you something i will tell you something very clearly for yes, that sir. this is what you have to do for your exams i have not given you 24 hours from 24 hours i have given you 2 hours in morning 2 hours in evening 1 hour over here apart from that whatever extra now you are not having seminars every day you will have yes, between, maybe in a month you will have one or two presentations jc clubs or whatever you have you will not have that yes, every sir. day that can be managed in one sunday there is no excuse for that yes okay, yes or no yes sir yes or yes, no sir. see i will tell you yes, one thing very very clearly you have yes, to be sir. confident enough to do what it takes and whatever i am telling you is not not doable you cannot get afraid with something so simple i used to read more than this when i was in class 10 and 12 even students in class 10 and 12 are, read, are reading more than this whatever plan that i have given you it is very much easy and very much doable if you see it is very oh. very 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 easy but the thing is you have to take the effort to do it and right now you are not being able to do it the reason is you are not prepared mentally for it that is the only reason and the day you start doing it you will say to yourself was it that much easy so the thing is you have to be consistent in this approach every day you have to be consistent okay. in this approach and that is the reason i have not given a very tight shit okay this is not a very tight okay, shit even if you even if you sleep at 11 you wake up at 6 o'clock 6 to 8 8 and a half you have a lot of time to read in that time 2 to 2 and a half hours you have to take out in the morning someone is asking when to read when to read someone asked me over here that when to study histo and cyto see you can i am just giving you an example you can divide your time according to your wish you can add histo in morning also for example monday you have read this for example next day you kept histo pathology and systemic pathology along with cytology this is just according to me you can break down in any form that you wish to but my point is every day 2 hours in morning in the middle and in the evening i have to give this much time you are going to you are going to able to do this this is not and why i have given you practicals in the evening because these topics are very easy and you can just sit and you can just read these topics now having said all of these things having said all of these things this is just what i have followed now some of you might be smart enough to wake up at 4 o'clock and read till 9 and complete the quota in the morning you don't want to do anything else and whatever you know you can do anything else later on some of you you are night readers so you might start around 9 pm at night after you know some of you are mothers after tending to your children around 9 o'clock till 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock at night you are managing your time so there is no hard and fast rule some of us are early risers some of us we are you know night owls so accordingly whatever suits you but mostly you should always divide and read divide and read what is the meaning of that i want to tell you don't waste an entire day reading only general pathology or don't waste an entire day reading only histopathology because the chances are if for example if you are given a whole day to read general pathology you will become bored and you will not be able to complete that much that that you can if you read different topics in one day if you are reading in this particular manner the chances are that you are going to cover each and everything proportionately see the term is proportionately now i have already told you about this different sections okay all these different sections i have discussed why have i discussed why have i told you about these things so that you can divide your time you know that i have to read these books these books carries marks i have to perform over here so in that situation i have to read them i have to prepare for my exam and i have to so in this way you will become very confident that i am proportionately giving time to different topics this is what i want to tell you people is this very very clear is this very clear okay after organization as i told you so this is the first thing that i have discussed over here that is in the approach that i have discussed is the organization the second thing that i will discuss over here in the approach okay as i have already told you last 5 years questions to be solved first okay after that whatever you am along with this the basics 
the topics which are basic topics for example what is basics neoplasia chapter is basic chapter 1 to 7 is basics everything about that is basics you cannot you know afford to miss on that okay number 1 number number 3 very important thing is as i have already told you about the question paper attempting is to attempt all questions in your exam as i have already told you 70 to 80% questions will be common you have to concentrate here on the comments okay 20 to 30% will be new okay i am not saying that you completely ignore this section but it should not be like like for this you are given you are giving around 50 50% time for both of them no that shouldn't be the case majority time should be devoted to the common questions that is asked in the exam okay okay one very important thing you have to read all of my notes that has been uploaded okay all the notes are there along with that having said that i will tell you that robins should be your bible okay should be your bible for example when you don't have time when you cannot recall there are lots of things to read you are not being able to recall all the things or for example your time is less so you just read robins any topics any difficulty you are not getting through with the notes it is getting lengthy any problem this is the emergency sos okay it is the emergency sos to go to. robins is the bible it is the bible any time that you are having a free time always carry robins with you either in your ipad or anywhere or my notes are already there robins i am not telling you for general pathology general pathology my notes are enough even for systemic pathology majority of the things from robins have been covered but for example if for example i will give you an example lung tumors for example lung tumors i have made a lecture out of robins and i have made a lecture out of who now for you ideally you should read who but if you don't have the time you should read robins zone you know both the lectures are there in in the website understand what i am trying to say so if you don't have the time and energy you fall back to robins this is what i am telling you to go book okay your seniors will tell you the same thing to those who have passed out okay as i have already told you common topics first common topics first rare topics later rare topics later okay after that i will tell you one important thing what i used to do i used to complete everything i used to complete each and everything by 7 o'clock i used to do my i used to come back around 4 4:30 i used to come back 5 to 7 i used to read 7:30 i used to complete everything from 7 o'clock till 10 o'clock i used to enjoy every day it used to be the time for my exercise it used to be time for my exercise it used to be time for my enjoyment movies or something or the other i used to do something fruitful i used to cook inside of home so you might be your you might have your own hobbies you might have your own way of you know unwinding so this is equally important i cannot stress the importance of this to you people you people must be thinking that no 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 this is important and this is the part that i used to look forward to every day so when i am waking up i used to think today i will complete my target in this time and i will become free in this time and so i can do these things okay acha having set the target do not set targets which are which are not achievable for example if you keep tomorrow two hours in the morning i am going to complete chapter 1 to 7 of robins don't keep such targets that you cannot you know fulfill always keep an easy target first and slightly you you know you should uh, gear up and you should increase the content that you are covering each day is it very very very, very clear to everyone okay the seventh important thing as i have already told you mix and match don't read single topic in a day mix and match read everything in one day so that you will feel you know comfortable you will feel nice and you will be confident enough that you read many things okay acha one one again very important thing is that i told you the schedule you should schedule one day prior one day prior you should schedule now i will tell you one very important aspect that i was lucky enough to do we were a group of eight residents and in college we used to study in groups we used to it wasn't always possible no it wasn't always possible but whenever it was possible we used to have group discussion what is the meaning of group discussion for example today morning two hours you have read something your friend has read another some something other thing in those two hours another your one of a friend in morning has read something another two hours so you take out time to discuss those topics 
when you are in college in that time so whatever you write you have read you recite in front of someone else then whatever one uh, other person has read will recite something then this third person so what happens that you have read one topic but because five people or eight people were there and everyone has read some topic so there is a discussion and you come to know about five topics together and things discussed in groups strikes your brain and stays in your memory for a long term period this is not essential but if you can do this there is nothing like it and when you discuss in groups what happens it tends to diffuse your tension it tends to make you feel that you are not in this alone this is very important okay so with this we have completed the basic approach that you have i will be sharing a lot of things in the whatsapp group uh, and uh, now it is your turn to ask any more doubts if you have i have completed my discussion from my side yes anyone has any kind of doubt or they want to ask any question you can ask now yes anyone is having any more questions i will tell you if you follow this if you follow this i am telling you very nicely if you follow this in 3 to 4 months time you will be able to complete each and everything if you start now november you start now you start now you can divide the topics any way that you are comfortable i just give you a, an example how to do it 3 to 4 months time is enough and i am taking an average time this is an average time some of you i was able to complete everything under 2 months okay it is completely all right if you complete in 4 months time there is nothing unusual about it. exams will be in april every year not may june it's hardly 5 months from today okay so it is so so see how does it make make a difference from today i i give gave you this for 3 to 4 months even if i give you 4 months time november december january february march you have 5 months i have given a target of 3 to 4 months so i have saved one more month for you yes one important thing i wish to discuss that in the last month in the last month the last lap becomes very important now for example in the last month if you see okay if, if you see the last month in the last 30 days okay it is very easy you have to give approximately if you see from here okay in the last 30 days from paper 1 two paper 3 and paper 4 now in the last 30 days your last 30 days should start at, at least four days before paper 1 what is the meaning of this the meaning is for example if your exam is on 1st of april okay then your 30 day cycle of last revision should start from 27th march not march sorry 27th Fe february february is actually uh, 28 day so in that scenario you, ha you have to take 3 days prior okay so in that situation for example you should start from 24th feb understand what i am trying to say because you have to take 3 days extra and from there because the last 4 days will be taken for preparation of paper number 1 so in this 30 day cycle where you want to revise you start first with general pathology in the 30 days you will take around 7 days to prepare for general pathology systemic pathology another 7 days hemat plus cyto should be complete in 5 days recent advance see i will tell you about myself i used to complete recent advance studying in 2 days and in the end one day before the exam i used to complete the revision in 3 to 4 hours also so this is the basic revision after your 3 to 4 months is over you should keep one month time for the final revision and this is the amount of days that you should give i have taken 30 days but this is the minimum amount of time that is required that means before the exam starts 14 plus 5 is 19 plus 2 21 one, 21 days of revision plus 4 days in hand for the paper number 1 that you are going to give and after that your exam is going to follow after one day interval okay okay any more doubts anyone is having 
yes any more doubts anyone is having sir how to manage our thesis during all of this i hope that you have already submitted your thesis <laughs> no sir it's not it. why see i will tell you one thing very i it is quite a surprise for me how many of you have not yet submitted the thesis because for us for example we submitted our i had submitted my thesis in the month already 6 months before you have to submit your thesis in month of july only i had submitted my thesis my exam was in month of march yes sir is then is there no deadline it is feb it is feb i this this, this is quite sad that they have done like anyways it's all right that is nothing to become worried about then in that situation you will have to take out see i have taken 5 hours from your day <laughs> okay then in yes, that sir. situation you have to first submit your thesis as, as i told you even if you do very well if you don't complete your thesis you are not eligible to sit for your exams yes sir okay so about the thesis i have not taken into consideration about the thesis because in our university in the month of july we by the month of july august we had to submit maximum with the late fees everyone had submitted by month of october we had sit we had sat for the exam in march in early march 2020 we were giving the exam after the third theory paper there was a lockdown okay so very yes. very important in march we had given so we did not have much time we became free in the month of november only november december january we had 3 months only 3 to 4 months in february was the last month so yes. i had completed by end of december and early january so you have to factor in out for thesis you have to add additional one or two hours in your duty that is why submission is in december okay for anyone whatever is there you have to be you have to get completed then see i will tell you the big important thing is that you have to complete your thesis as fast as possible now yes. those of you who are completing the thesis by by february when is your exam when uh, is your july so your exam is in july so you are having a plenty of time yes yes understand so that is proportionate to everyone now for example because my exam was in because this is the rule by the nmc at least 3 to 4 months 5 months before you have to submit there's a deadline if you don't submit you will not be eligible for the exams yes. okay so the university cannot do like that okay any any more doubts anyone is having acha one very important thing i forgot to tell you in your exam the thesis is also carrying marks around 10 to 20 marks is there this will be asked in your grand viva so grand viva will also entail your thesis so you have to read the thesis also before this your thesis is in december is all right but when is your exam nilisha you will have 3 4 months time before that so april most probably they have exams every year okay okay then you have 3 to 4 months time 4 months is in hand so it's not an issue march is a so see then you have to plan accordingly so each to its own each to its own so i have given you in given you a generalized idea about how to approach the things now whatever i have given you that 5 hour is not something that you know that is a lot of things that i have given you if you have read for your mbbs you have read much more than this you you have you have to read 8 to 9 hours a day yes or no so right now yes, you have to take out you have to devote extra time for your thesis and it's not like you are not having time you are having 3 years for your thesis then you have to evaluate and you have to see how much long and i'm sure most of you must have completed the thesis by now that i'm sure about it is only the last end things that are left so you should act start acting on your thesis from now you should start devoting separate time for your thesis from now extra from whatever i have given you okay because this has to be done because for thesis i think the first 6 months goes for making the thesis in the third year and we used to get over with thesis in the first 6 months after that they used to be you know we we used to start reading about our exams and everything okay okay uh, any more questions anyone is having any more doubts regarding any more things more so you can ask your doubts in the group only from my side i will be updating each and everything remember this is going to be a roller coaster for you people it is going to be a roller coaster things are not as perfect that i have, the way i have shown you there will be times you will not feel like reading there will be time you will miss your targets but the only golden thing is you have to be consistent you have to get up and you have to continue this is the the thing that i i am telling you you have to be consistent and everyone is going to pass you can take that and first you have to believe in yourself 
ओके ओके आई थिंक आई हैव वन मोर डाउट सर विल यू मेक वीडियोज ऑन रिसेंट एडवांस ऑल्सो विल यू आई विल शेयर नोट्स ऑन रिडियंस ऑन रिसेंट एडवांस okay recent advance notes will be shared to everyone if the time is going to permit then i am going to uh, then i am going to discuss you know make videos on the recent advance but usually recent advances no one is not making videos on that and these recent advances are not that much difficult already most of the difficult topics i will share the pdfs of the same and recent advances are quite difficult to understand if you have any problem then you can ask me i will explain you certain things about that but mostly once you read the notes you will not have that problem i am sure about that but if yes if the time permits then i am going to make videos on recent advances as well 